So let's take a look at a couple PSCAD examples that involve surge arresters. And the first one is one from the PSCAD website on applying a metal oxide brist or surge arrestor. And you can see this is quite a bit more detailed than what we've actually gotten in before. So what's kind of interesting about this is what they're doing is they're actually modeling a, a lightning surge hitting a station where that has a transformer. So what you're concerned about is a transformer being damaged. So for the lightning source, they've got a more of a sophisticated model where I would just use a simple triangular waveform. They're actually using a more complicated exponential fit for the lightning current injection. It's still a controlled source. And what they're doing is they're injecting into phase C in this case. But what, what's interesting is that they're looking at this basically going right at the kind of like the entrance to the substation. And so what they're doing in this case is they're modeling a little bit of a transmission segment to the left. They've got this terminated by resistances that have the same impedance as the, the line. So there's no reflection from this end. And then it's, it's kind of cut off right here, but you can see this when I pull up the PSCAD diagram. What they're doing is they're actually modeling the bus bars and the connections uh, associated with that. So there's like a, like a 90 meters of station bus in here they're modeling, and they're just modeling this, these bars basically as, as transmission lines, and it's got associated um, capacitance associated with this on either end. So, so anyway, you've got kind of the metal, the metal bars in the substation being modeled by these transmission segments. Uh, they've also got a model in here for the, the surge arrestor, uh, as well as they're adding some additional voltage in here um, so they can basically model the fact that you're going to have some additional voltage incorporated into the analysis that corresponds to the voltage that's being supplied at 60 hertz. So what they're doing in this case is they're actually modeling a peak voltage contribution due to the uh, to the normal operating voltages. And then in the far right, then they're modeling the capacitances uh, associated with the transformer winding. And so it, when they can, they're actually modeling all these different straight capacitances in the simulation. And so this is up on the PSCAD site for the for the knowledge base in the knowledge base. And so if then if you are actually going to pull this up then in PSCAD, you can actually read some of the more of the notes behind this where it kind of gives some explanations of what they're they're doing in here as far as modeling these these different bus bars and things like that. And then for the the surge arrestor, it's, it's kind of a complicated model where they're modeling a couple of these surge arresters actually put in parallel. And then remember when I talked about how the lead connections played an important role? They're modeling these lead connections using inductance in here. And then if you look at the characteristics of the metal oxide baristers, um, basically you can see they're modeling an AVB unit with a rating of 192 kV. And all these values are given in terms of IV tables where you have a set of currents in one table and you have the voltages in per unit in the other table. So you're, it's kind of like a piecewise linear representation of the IV characteristics in this case. Uh, so anyway, when you run this particular simulation, then, um, then what you could actually see in this case is what's going on as far as the lightning current uh, you could see the current that's absorbed by the arrestor, and you can see what kind of voltage you would actually have uh, across the transformer. And you have an oscillatory nature of this due to the fact you have these capacitances that are, um, these straight capacitances that are added to the, this particular circuit. So anyway, kind of a, shows how complex this could actually get. I've got a more simple type of example I'm going to post up on the Moodle side as well. And this is from a workbook that was put together by EPRI, and I'll talk about that after I get through this. 
And this is a, a capacitor switching transit. What's going on is you have a capacitor switching operation where the capacitor is opening up. And then what happens because of stress across the switch, because of overvoltage stress, the, the switch, insulation, switch insulation fails and we get what's called a restrike, which basically it's going to look like you're opening the capacitor and then very, very quickly you get that switching back in again. That's what the restrike is going to look like. And so you've got an 88 megavar cap bank, you've got 180 kV MLV surge arrestor, you've got some surge impedances, and this involves a GE Tranquil unit uh, with an MCOV of 144 kV. And so in this particular case, and what we're doing is we're building a, a simulation up. Uh, we've got the, the source circuit in here, so we've got the source impedance and the voltage. We've got the capacitor that we're going to be switching, and so what's going to happen is we're going to open this breaker up, and then we're going to close it back in to simulate the restrike. And we're basically looking at what's going to happen with and without this surge arrestor in the, the circuit right here. So when you look at the results, again, what you do for the arrestor model is you would put in the IV characteristics and you can get this from the data sheet. And you can see that where the voltage is just above nominal, you're not drawing very much current. But then as soon as that voltage starts to increase, that current just kind of grows um, very rapidly. And, and basically what you can do is you can pull in the points from the, from the data sheet in order to populate this table. So what this would look like if he had no arrestor, if he had the restrike operation, then basically what you're going to get is you're going to get a really large transit associated with this. Where at worst case, you could actually get a voltage tripling effect, but in this case, it doesn't quite go up that high. Uh, this actually shows the voltage across the switch, and it shows that when you operate the capacitor bank, you put too much stress across here, and it just basically shorts out again. And then when you put the surge arrestor into the circuit, then it really cuts down on this transit peak by quite a bit. So it does a lot to kind of mitigate this particular case. And so you go from having a peak voltage of 500 kV down to a peak voltage of 300 kV. So as whereas 200 kV would have been the normal maximum, you kind of you clip this around 300 kV. So I'll also go ahead and post the, um, the PSCAD model for this as well, for this lightning strike case. And then what you could do if you wanted to is you can play around a little bit with this as far as, um, you know, taking the arrestor out and putting the arrestor in uh, in order to figure out you know, what's going to be the impact. In this particular case, I've got the arrestor in the circuit, but I could also take the arrestor out. One other thing I'm calculating in here as well is I'm also calculating the current going through the arrestor. I'm also calculating the energy that's being dissipated. And so in this particular case, what I'm doing is I'm plotting out the current. You can see during the first part of the surge that I get quite a few, bit of current going through here. But, but then when it conducts like the second time, this current drops off quite a bit. And um, kind of you can't really even see it after the second, the second cycle. But what we're going to have when the surge arrestor is conducting, if you take voltage times current because it's a resistive type of an element, then what we're going to get is we're going to get power and if you integrate that power over time then you're going to get an energy so you can see what happens is when we we're conducting current then the amount of energy that has to be dissipated by that surge arrestor grows 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 and eventually hits some sort of a peak value and what we have to make sure of is that we need to make sure we can dissipate this in terms of heat and so this is where the kilojoule divided by kv values come in is if you took this value of energy in kilojoules and you divided by the, the voltage rating of the arrestor, we need to make sure we can dissipate this amount of energy 
um, through the housing out back out to air. And you can see during the second the second cycle where we also have the arrestor operate that we even get a little bit more energy that has to be dissipated. So this is one thing you need to check is you need to make sure that your surge arrestor is large enough. Otherwise, you need, might need to put you know some of these surge arrestors together in parallel in order to in order to dissipate more energy. Okay. So as far as references, um, there's the standard, the ANSI standard, the the C sixty two point eleven, which talks about metal oxide barrister applications. You know that's a pretty good reference. Um, obviously, like the PS CAD site has a lot of good material up there as well. Um, one thing you you might want to look at if you're interested in modeling lightning strikes is they actually do have a webinar they did that's posted up on YouTube, which is kind of useful. It kind of goes into the tricks involved in doing that. The The other reference I want to point your attention at is this EPRI reference, where they actually have a link to what they call product EL4650. And this was actually done back in the 80s when EPRI took the base EMT P code from Bonneville Power, and they actually worked at per coming up with a version for their members. You know, they talked about there's different forks for EMTP development, and so when Epri first took this took this on, they decided there wasn't enough documentation, and so they came up with some workbooks. And they've been kind of gracious enough now to share this, and so if you go to the site, you can actually download these as PDFs. So what's kind of interesting about this is there's an application guide. There's the 4650, which is an application guide. And it basically talks about how do you do EMTP modeling of lines, transformers, circuit breakers, surge arresters, um, sources. Um, initial conditions is something you could set in the original version of EMTP. So they talk about that. And they talk about how to do different types of studies. This gets into a lot more detail than we are able to get into class here. And so if you guys think you're going to be running this um, commercially, like say for a consulting company, you may want to download this guide before they decide to yank it from the website. Because even though it's an old reference, it has a lot of really useful field material in here about how to do these different types of studies. So it's kind of cookbook in a way, right, for how we set this up. The 4651 books uh, also cover some of this as well where they uh, there's actually I think like four different volumes so they have different samples in here you know like sample systems set up you know they talk about well what's involved in doing like breaker modeling and you know what's involved in doing all sorts of different aspects of EMTP simulations and so again this is based on the old version of EMTP which used the old Fortran 80 column ASCII card input and didn't have a GUI associated with it. And so all these might be a little bit hard to follow. But as far as the engineering knowledge in here, I mean, there's quite a bit in here about how EMTP works and how to model all these different types of phen phenomena, a lot more detail than we were able to get into class um, this time. And then what's also interesting, too, in the 4651 book in Volume 2, they've got a section just on insulation coordination studies. And so they talk about all the different types of voltage stresses that can occur, a lot more things than we talked about in class, because there's a lot of different sources of overvoltages, uh, some which we talked about, you know, like capacitor switching transits and transformer inrush. Um, but then they also got into other things as well, like subsynchronous resonance, which is more of a transmission phenomenon involving generator models. So anyway, uh, go ahead and download this and just have it because, you know, it's free. And at some point, these guys are going to decide to drop it from the website and this will be kind of lost in a way. <laughs>